Okay, let's try to get this other method working as well. I don't like it as much as the first solution I showed you, um, but you do get the benefits of not having to have a content editor web part or use JavaScript. So if you just hate that stuff, this may be an option for you. So we're back to our issue list, not showing any time entries. We're back to what it was in the beginning. So let's open up the issues list again in SharePoint Designer. Listen libraries, issue, display form. And this time, instead of inserting a related item view, we are going to insert a display item form for time. Now this does not create the relationship for us automatically like the related item view, so we have to do that. And we do that with the parameter. So we want to create a parameter. We'll call our parameter issue ID param. And it is coming from the query string query string ID, which is the ID of the issue. Okay? And now we will filter our web part where the issue ID in time is equal to our issue ID parameter. So now our list is filtered. Uh, we can also uh, choose which uh, columns we want to see. I just want to see title and hours. You will notice the data for web part does not display your data as pretty as the item view. So when we look at it, you see that it shows title hours in a really ugly way. I need to turn on paging too. So let's set the paging to 30 items. Save it. And we come in here. It's just not as a nice display of data. It's just uh, table cells though, so you can go in there and edit that manually if you want. Um, like I said, I don't like the solution as much. What it does give us the ability to do though is to go into the code and reuse that parameter we created and, uh, and use the parameter to um, send that to the new page that, that we created. So what I want to do is I want to find the last row of my data view, which is always fun to search through all this stuff. Um, where is that? We're looking for the command footer row. Here it is right here. It's the last row. So I want to create a new row a new cell and it is going to have uh, ahref equals and our URL is going to be that same URL that we used before so we're going to copy that and we're going to though use our parameter now which was issue ID param right Close off that anchor and say, click here to create new item. Okay? So we're doing just straight HTML this time. We save that. And now, when we go into the page, if it all worked right, we see our link. Click here to create new item. Not as pretty. It opens up a page instead of the pop up. But our, our ID is set, so this is the other method, 10 hours, save it, and again, we have to close this page. It's just not an eloquent method. If we refresh this page, it shows right there, other method 10. Um, like I said, I don't like this method as much. You, maybe you can play around with it and make it more eloquent, uh, but it does work. It does get the job done. I um, hope you guys found this helpful. If I think of a better way to do it, I'll be sure to blog about it. If you have any better ideas, please let me know that too. Thanks.